now Nuselio is going to explain us why should we use the laparoscopy to uh, access the nerves uh, that are involved in the pelvic floor or pelvic organ dysfunction. Nuselio. Thank you, Ervin, and thank you, Michele, for the introduction. So, here are my disclosures. So, the, the first question is, uh, why laparoscopy? We as pelvic surgeons are not always aware that a great portion of the lumbosacral plexus crosses the pelvis in the retroperitoneal space. So we can, through laparoscopy, have access to the iliohypogastric, ilioinguinalis, genitofemoralis, femoral nerve, obturator nerve, and here they are. This is the psoas muscle, these are the external iliac vessels, this is the ilio, uh, Iliohypogastric, ilioinguinalis, genitofemoralis on the left side, very close to the peritoneal surface. We can also have access to the superior gluteal, the inferior gluteal, the sciatic nerve, the posterior cutaneous femoralis nerve, the pudendal nerve, and the nerves to the levator N9 muscles in a very straightforward way, as you can see here. These are the external iliac vessels. I'm opening the obturator space as if I was going to do uh, a lymphadenectomy. This is the Genitofemoralis nerve here. Obturator nerve. Lumbosacral trunk. The sciatic nerve. This is the endopelvic fascia. The pubocervical fascia, the white line here. The ischial spine here. And I'm cutting the sacrospinous ligament to expose the pudendal nerve. So this was a pudendal nerve detrapment, but it's very good to see the anatomy. This is the pudendal nerve here, the sacral nerve roots coming to form the sciatic nerve together with the lumbosacral trunk and the obturator nerve. So the sensitive innervation of those nerves is on top of the perineal area. We have also the, the, the posterior and anterior thigh, sciatic nerve, femoral nerve, iliohypogastric, ilinguinalis, genitofemoralis nerve. We also have the, the motoric innervation of the lower limbs and the, the perineal and pelvic floor muscles coming from those nerves. And on top of that, we also have the autonomic nerves. All of those were somatic nerves. We have the, the hypogastric nerves that carry proprioceptive signals from the bladder and, and innervate the internal urethro and anal sphincter with sympathetic innervation, they derive from the superior hypogastric plexus and they m merge with the pelvic splanchnic nerves to form the inferior hypogastric plexus. The, the pelvic splanchnic nerves are nervieri genti, they, they carry the, the parasympathetic signals uh, and they derive from S2, S3 and S4 before it's crossing over the, the uh, internal iliac uh, vessels. And they innervate the detrusor. They, they, they are the sole innervation of the motoric innervation of the detrusor. They, never, they, they do the extrinsic innervation of the column descendant, the sigmoid, and rectum. And they do uh, bladder nociceptive, carry bladder nociceptive signals. So let's take a look at the hypogastric nerves. That usually in women, they're confused with the uh, uterosacral ligaments. So we're opening here the pre-sacral space to do a sacral copopexy. This here, I'm opening the pre-sacral fascia. But when you dissect the pre-sacral fascia, you can find the hypogastric nerve, this is on the right side, uh, running over the fascia. And here you can easily see it spreading out in three branches to the bladder, uterus, and rectum, and the nerve to the lower third of the ureter. Through laparoscopy, we can also dissect the pelvic splanchnic nerves and the inferior hypogastric plexus. So this is an endometriosis surgery. I'm only dissecting those nerves to preserve them. So this is normal anatomy. I'm opening the presacral fascia here, dissecting the presacral space down to the coccyx. Then I'm I'm going to open the hypogastric fascia laterally.
And on top of the piriformis muscle, we can find the sacral nerve roots and the splanchnic nerves coming out of it. We can use intraoperative neurostimulation, so this is S3, S2. With S3, we can also induce pelvic floor contraction, pretty much the same way we do it when we're implanting an interstium. We can see the peristalsis increasing and the bladder contraction. So all of those nerves are uh, subject to, to intrapelvic entrapment. Uh, I've just shown our initial series with 30 cases, 29 cases. We're now at 50 cases. The most common cause is endometriosis. The second one is vascular entrapment, then uh, fibrosis and malformations of the piriformis muscle. In all those cases, what you're going to get, you can get uh, sciatica or perineal pain. It's usually unilateral, associated with uh, low urinary tract symptoms. Uh, uh, it could be sensory urgency or motoric urgency, depending on the, the point of, of entrapment. Uh, if it's before the, the emergency of the, of the pelvic splanchnic nerves, then you have motoric urgency, uh, detrusor overactivity. And if it's after that, you only have sensory urgency. You can have proctalgia, vesical tenesmus, vaginal, ten uh, uh, vaginal foreign body sensation. And here are some examples of those. This is the sciatic nerve. This is S3, incarcerated and trapped into endometriosis. This is S4 here. We're dissecting S2 out of the endometriosis. And you can see that the nerve root here is dilated. And the cause of that was endometriotic infiltration on the nerve roots. We can also have uh, fibrosis. You see, there was, this is fibrosis secondary to endometriosis. There was a radical resection here. You can still see the peritoneal scar. And the patient had uh, sciatica and uh, perineal pain and urinary urgency. Going to the nerve, we can already see the fibrotic tissue. And instead of that healthy fatty tissue that you've seen in the other dissection, what you can see here is fibrotic tissue that limits the movements of the, of the sciatic nerve. I hope I'm not responsible for that sound. Is it going to explode? You see, now stimulating here the... Uh, the Pressing the, 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 the scar shows the correlation of the sciatic nerve with the peritoneal surface. This is a Macaul suture on S2. Can you see here the suture? And we can also have pelvic varicosities. You see a dilated vein here and trapping the nerve roots. This is S3 here. These are the pelvic splanchnic nerves on the left side. And the fourth most common cause are abnormal bundles of the piriformic muscle. You see that you have seen the single nerve root lying on top of the piriformic muscle. You could just turn it off. <laughs> top of the piriformis muscle, and here you cannot see those roots. That's because there is this abnormal bundle of fibers. And traffic the sciatic nerve roots here. This is a tube, that one that's three. Now the sciatic nerve, we're mobilizing the, the bundle underneath the internal iliac vessels. And that's an interesting thing. As we move the leg here, you can see how the sciatic nerve moves and how the abnormal bundles go to the deep gluteal space. So this is the technique for laparoscopic implantation.
This is a paraplegic patient due to a thoracic 6 lesion. We're dissecting here the femoral nerve. On the left side, this is the psoas muscle. So lateral to it, there is the, psoas, the, the femoral nerve. Medial to it, we can find the sciatic and pudendal nerve. So here's the lumbosacral trunk. The sciatic nerve. The sacral nerve roots. Sacrospinous ligament, we're simulating the pudendal nerve here. And here's the entrance to Alcox canal. We dissect the same nerves on the right side, femoral nerve, sciatic and pudendal nerve. And we use the laparoscope to place the, the leads. So we have two poles into the Alcox canal, two poles over the sciatic nerve on the right side. We test for motoric threshold, so we always look for at least three volts of motoric threshold that when the patient is out of anesthesia, uh, becomes a 1 to 1.5 motoric threshold. So pudendal and sciatic on the left side, femoral nerve on the left side, We have attach it to the pelvic sidewall, and at the end, this is what we get. We have a generator with two bifurcated extensions, a nerve, uh, 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 one electrode to the pudendal and sciatic, the other to the femoral nerve, and the same thing on the contralateral side. So what we get is, with the pudendal nerve, we can actually induce a, 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 a sphincteric contraction. So you can use this for stimulation on demand or, or just neuromodulation which will increase about at about 50% the, the, the bladder capacity. In men we can also induce erection usually with bursts, high frequency bursts or with uh, low frequency continuous stimulation and we can do direct stimulation of the femoral nerve, you see, this is a C5, C, C6 patient with turning on his remote control to, to exercise his drive. So, simulating everything together in a paraplegic patient, what we can do is have the simulator have the simulator to to stretch the knee and then the patient can use the hips to walk in this manner. So there is a ramp up. He's waiting for the ramp up. He has turned on the stimulator. Then he stands up and as if he had a bracer on his knee. You see, he's only balancing himself. And that's how he walks. He's not a normal gait, but it's useful for requiring less adaption or for him to stand up and pick up something from, from a book for a shelf, from a shelf. And that's what I had to show you, and it's open for discussion if you want. This is a neuroanatomy course that we run every year in, in St. Louis. Thank you.